हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू डे ट्वेंटी सेवंथ ऑफ जनवरी लीड को चैलेंज एंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर हैविंग अ ग्रेट टाइम द क्वेश्चन दैट वी हैव इन टू डेज मैक्सिम जोर ऑफ टू नंबर्स इन एन आर ए इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी आर गिवन एन आर ऑफ इंटेजर्स एंड वी नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू दैट एग्जिस्ट बिटवीन एनी टू एलिमेंट्स इफ यू परफॉर्म जोर ऑपरेशन बिटवीन दैम हेयर इन दिस एग्जाम्पल वी आर गिवन एन इनपुट आर एस थ्री टेन फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव टू एट and the maximum zor that you will be able to identify out of the two elements would be of 5 zor 25 that will result in 28 the basic and the naive approach that comes to everybody's mind is on the lines of having two for loops so you create two for loops iterate over all the elements nums and in the other for loop again iterate over all the elements of nums and you, with each iteration you calculate element 1 zor element 2 and uh, you create an answer variable you try and find out the maximum one that exists out of this operation element 1s or element 2 and in the end once you are out of these two for loop you simply return the answer however this will lead to tle time limit exceeded exception what could there be a better approach for this the answer is yes how let's quickly walk through the presentation and we'll be using tries to solve this question i'll tell you how to think about the solution and the approach for such questions so do watch it till the end maximum zor of two numbers in an array lead code 421 it's a medium level question on lead code and i totally feel the same so let's get started let's try with understanding the zor operation because that's that is of utmost importance if you don't understand zor operation you'll not be able to get the solution so if i perform zor of 0 cross zor 0 it will lead to 0 if i perform zor of 0 dot with 1 i'll get 1 if i'll perform zor with 1 with 0 i'll get 1 if i'll perform zor of 1 with 1 i'll get 0 so what is an interesting part whenever you have opposite values 0 1 the answer becomes 1 when you have the same value 0 0 or 1 1 the answer turns out to be 0 if you have understood this much you have understood 50% of the algo Now let's get back to the same example that was specified in the question. We have the input array where elements are three, ten, five, twenty-five, two, and eight. This column represents the binary representation of each element. Also, you'll ask me there are thirty-two bits in the binary representation. However, for the sake of simplicity, I have only defined five bits right now. Now let's go step by step. If I ask you guys, which to which number three should be zor to, so that the output should be maximized. The, the that value would be equal to if we toggle all the bits in this number and that would be nothing but triple one double zero so if i have a number that exists in this input array which is equal to this one and in case i perform the zor of this number with that number then the result would be nothing but all ones let me ask you another question let's take an example of 25 now if i say to which number shall i perform the zor operation so that the output should be maximized we want to generate the final output as all ones so that number we should be equal to the inversion of this number double zero double one zero and does such number exist in this array it doesn't exist but we are looking for the closest such number if you have understood this you have understood 70% of the algo now let's conclude what i'm going to do i'll create a try node and i'll use all these numbers that are there in the input array and i'll plot them in a form of a try so let's try and understand how we have plotted this and how this try node is helping us arriving at the solution so the first number is 0001 and here this portion of the graph represents 0001 so this representation is of 3 And let's walk through another representation for better clarity. We have twenty-five plotted as double one double zero one. So twenty-one is plotted over here. Now what I'm gonna do? I have successfully built in the entire try node, and let's go step by step. So I'll again start an iteration, and I'll identify that number which exists in this try node that is closest to the best optimal solution. For example, here for twenty-five. the best possible solution was 00110 so i'll identify that number from that try node which is closest to this one how let's look at it so right now let's assume we are iterating over 
and let's go step by step the first bit that we see is zero so we see zero over here and what is the counter of zero the counter of zero is one so does one exist in my tri node the answer is yes one exists in my tri node so i'll create the new number using this so one does exist let's proceed ahead next i see is again a zero in my three integer value and i'll try and search for the counter node in the try so again one does exist the counter of zero would be one so one does exist so so far we are good let's proceed ahead next we see is again a zero now what is the counter of zero it's one but does one exist in my try node starting at this particular one it doesn't exist so what do we have to do do we have any other option the other option is only zero so we have to live with zero so the third node would be zero let's proceed ahead next we see is a one so the counter of one is nothing but zero so right now we were at this particular location and we again see a zero which is a happy case so we'll add zero let's proceed ahead next we see is one so counter of one is zero however there is no zeroth node attached to this particular node as a result of which we'll have to live with one so the final best possible solution for three turns out to be this particular node that exists in the try and if you perform zor of this node with three what do you get so let's do that double one double zero one zor with three the result would be one one zero one zero so to what integer value does this map to it maps to 26 so for the integer value 3 we tried and identified that integer which will lead to the maximum zor which is nothing but this value and the zor output with respect to 3 is given as 26 so this is a maximum possible value that can be derived from the try for the integer value 3 let's proceed ahead and let's try and evaluate it for few more values so that you get a good hold of the concept Let's move to 25 this time. We have the number as 11001. So let's start the iteration. So the first bit turns out to be 1. And what is the counter of 1? The counter of 1 is 0. So we'll search in the try node. Do we have the 0 with at the same level or not? Yes, it does exist. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is another 1. So we'll try and identify whether in the try node there exists a 0 node at the same level or not starting from originating from the previous node yes it does exist so right now we have formed found a uh, two nodes zero zero so so far we are good next we see is a zero the counter of zero turns out to be one so do we have a node with value one originating at the same level starting from the previous zero the answer is yes and the integer turns out to be zero zero one so far let's proceed ahead next we see is again a zero and the counter of 0 turns out to be 1. So do we have a 1 originating from this one? No, we don't have. So what we have to live with? We have to live with is a 0. So let's add 0 here. And let's proceed ahead. Next we see is a 1. The counter of 1 is 0. Uh, let's check whether it exists at this particular 0 node or not. It doesn't exist. So we have to live with 1. So the best possible value for 25 turns out to be 00101 which exists in this input data set. So out of this complete data set that is given to us, the value that will lead to the maximum XOR output with respect to 25 is nothing but 5 and we, we got its binary representation while iterating through the try. We'll perform the XOR operation between these two elements and we'll get the maximum ZOR value corresponding to 25. That would be nothing but 28. So let's perform the ZOR operation between these two elements. This It would be triple one double zero. So the ZOR of 25 with this number, which is nothing but five, gives you 28, which is, a, which is in sync with our expectation. So the previous maximum value that we identified was 26. The current value turns out to be 28. So we'll discard the previous one and we'll use the current one, which is nothing but 28. 
so now let's conclude the entire algo what we are going to do we'll iterate through all the elements that are given in the input data set and we'll build the try node once we have successfully built the entire try tree then we will iterate through each integer value that is given in the input data set one by one we'll go and identify the maximum possible value that exists in the try node that will lead to the answer and we'll perform the zor operation between these two elements that would give us one possibility of the maximum zor output we'll go step by step first 3 then 10 5 25 2 and 8 and we'll try to identify the maximum zor output that exists corresponding to each of these entries and we'll take the maximum one in the end and simply return the result the time complexity of this approach would be order of n once you have successfully built the try node how so you'll iterate through all these elements and build your uh, try graph and again in the second loop you will simply iterate through this try node and the result that you are going to get is a single in is in a single iteration of the try node so corresponding to 3 you'll get one value by simply iterating through the try graph so the time complexity will be reduced to order of n from order of n square if you have any doubts, don't worry, it will be cleared in the coding section. So let's quickly move on to the coding part. Here I simply created a try node and each children of this try node object will have a size 2. Why 2? Because in binary there can be two possibilities, 0 and 1. And then I created the root of the try node. Uh, let's walk through the core method uh, and then I'll tell you how these helper methods are helping us. So in case my nums happens to be null or nums.length happens to be zero, that's a corner case. I simply return zero. Otherwise, I initialize my root object to a new try node and I go and start building the try graph. I pass in the nums array that was passed over here and it's simply responsible for appropriately building the try node. In that graph that I showed in the presentation, the size was five, but however, in reality, it would be of 32 bits therefore i have uh, started a for loop starting from i equals to 31 up till i is greater than equal to 0 i am minus minus with each node we extract the current bit we check if the uh, current node dot children at that current bit happens to be null in if in case it does then i assign a new try node at that location otherwise I simply move ahead in the iteration so this is pretty simple and straightforward nothing that complicated typical way of creating or building drive. Now let's talk about the core method. Here I have created a safety check. If my nums is zero, nums.length is zero, I simply return zero. Otherwise I initialize my root node to new try. I go and build my try using the helper method that I have created. And then I take a maximum variable, which is equal to integer minimum one that will give us the result. So let's st start the iteration for each nums value that exists in my nums array. I find out that element with which the current element gets zored, it will return the maximum result. So find maximum zor for current element and I pass in the nums value. It returns me another integer that exists in my nums array and we perform the zor operation between these two. We, and we then go ahead and find out the maximum result that is, could be possible iterating over all the elements of my nums array. The problem reduces to writing this method appropriately. So let's quickly move on to it. Here I have created a current node variable which is responsible for iterating over my try tree. I created a target nums variable initialize it to zero. I start the iteration along all the bits of my nums integer. I extract the current bit. I find out the target bit. If my current bit happens to be zero, I take target bit at one. Otherwise I'll take it as zero. I check if my current node dot children dot target bit it does exist in my uh, try graph or tree then I update my target nums to target nums into 2 plus target bit. I proceed ahead to the next node in my try so otherwise if it doesn't exist then I use current bit over here. In the end I simply return my target nums. So let's try this up. Accept it. It's 73 times faster, which is pretty good. And the time complexity of this approach is order of n. Why order of n? Because for each element, we are iterating through the try graph and finding out the best possible available element with which when zord give us a maximum result. 
आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस लॉजिक एंड इफ यू डिड प्लीज डोंट फर्गेट टू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल ऑल्सो इफ फेसबुक हैज ऑलवेज बीन योर ड्रीम कंपनी देन आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट एन अर्ली सब्सक्राइबर ऑफ कोडिंग डिकोडेड चैनल हैज गॉट थ्रू इट ही हैज शेयर हिज एक्सपीरियंस इन अ वीडियो विच आई पोस्टेड ये स्टेड आई एम अटैचिंग इट लिंक ओवर हियर सो डू ट्राई इट अप इट्स वर्थ वॉचिंग यू विल हैव अ लॉट ऑफ वैल्यूएबल एडवाइस दैट विल हेल्प यू क्रैक एनी इंटरव्यू एट फैंग सो डू गिव इट अ शॉर्ट थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग